Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, I think we're about time to start. I don't see anybody else coming in. Um, I'm Tammy Van Hove. I'm a distinguished engineer at IBM, and uh, which basically means I work with a lot of really smart people who are doing really cool things, particularly in and around OpenStack. And I get to come here today and talk about one of our product offerings that we are building on OpenStack called Cloud Manager with OpenStack. Um, so I'm going to take you through here you know, how we're leveraging OpenStack and our cloud solutions, uh, drill down specifically into what Cloud Manager offers. And then my colleague here, Nina Garadia, we will also provide you a demo of um, Cloud Manager with OpenStack. So when I was thinking about enterprise and what does uh, uh, OpenStack and enterprise mean, you know, I went, I went back to Webster and we all kind of think of enterprise as, you know, a commercial company and, you know, we and IBM, we have a lot of enterprise clients. But for me, it was something more than that. And um, especially as we look at IBM and OpenStack and what we're doing with OpenStack, is, is this this project we're undertaking with the broad community and leveraging OpenStack in our solutions and, and making a bold move and bringing OpenStack to the enterprise and um, contributing, uh, you know, not only to the community, but incorporating that into our enterprise solutions. And so IBM and OpenStack together, you know, we're on this bold adventurous journey together for on behalf of our enterprise clients in delivering um, a, a new cloud infrastructure for them to build upon. And as we, you know, look at um, options available and, uh, you know, clients are looking at, we're considering what's the right cloud infrastructure for me. Um, even, you know, do I, uh, how do I keep open flexibility? How do I assure interoperability? And can I go it on my own? Or is there a vendor out there that, that um, will work with me? So certainly, you know, there's proprietary um, solutions in the market. We IBM had have those as well, and then we've been transforming those to leveraging OpenStack. Uh, certainly, there are many who are um, want to roll their own, and uh, you know, on that bleeding edge, and are dealing directly in the community and bringing OpenStack into their data centers and deploying OpenStack and getting familiar with it. And then on the other side here is. Uh, Open Plus, which is where we and IBM have, have opted to play in leveraging all that the community is doing and that we're doing in the community as well and providing that open, flexible infrastructure um, to clients, so assured of interoperability and uh, you know, not, not vendor lock-in, but then adding uh, additional capabilities around that and what clients are looking for in deploying an enterprise solution. So even if they start you know, on their roll their own path, um, many clients have come back to us with looking for, you know, support and, uh, you know, robust support, lifecycle management of the infrastructure, how am I going to do upgrades, um, performance monitoring, all that stuff. And so they want to partner with the vendor. And so our solution is um, Cloud Manager with OpenStack, where that OpenStack plus, um, so we get the, the best of the innovative community as well as the practicalities around managing in, a, in an enterprise space. So OpenStack has become, as you, if those of you that were in the previous session, you heard Todd state, very core fundamental to our cloud solutions in IBM, whether they be um, being delivered through soft layer and some of the soft layer services that are being, um, uh, that Michael Fork will talk to you about in a couple of sessions after this one, uh, what soft layer is doing with OpenStack, IBM Cloud Orchestrator, which Andrew Trossman will talk about after this session and take you through how um, we've gone, you know, taking OpenStack even further with Cloud Orchestrator. And then I'm going to talk specifically about IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack. And, and this offering, this product has essentially become the core foundation upon which our um, other offerings are building. So it's OpenStack plus, and, and again, Orchestrator and the soft layer um, services and offerings are, are leveraging that common core foundation. So IBM Cloud OpenStack, IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack was formerly known also, um, as Smart Cloud Entry. Um, Smart Cloud Entry was something that uh, we had offered a couple years ago now that was a proprietary infrastructure. It didn't have a lot of flexibility, you know, and, and we started to look at OpenStack and get excited by how we can leverage OpenStack in, in providing a simple, easy to use 
um, easy to deploy cloud infrastructure solution. And about a year ago, we started to incorporate OpenStack with uh, Folsom release and, um, and transform our proprietary infrastructure to that open flexible infrastructure. And now what we have available with Cloud Manager with OpenStack is, is wholly OpenStack, um, obviously open infrastructure and we've added uh, IBM value at contribution to that to support our platforms, which I'll show you as we go through. Uh, as we go through the presentation here. We've also are looking at, um, have added um, enhancements to allow cloud managers to more fully optimize their, their cloud resources and get the most out of those resources and, and, and also in configuring those resources available to users, to their end users, um, to provide a, a more independent self-service capability but yet monitor the consumption or govern the consumption of that cloud infrastructure. Yeah, and also wrappered that with world-class IBM support. We've got services engagements to help clients who want to do custom deployments, custom configurations of OpenStack, um, and then also uh, support for our hybrid um, configurations for those clients that want to do on-premise and perhaps use soft layer services for off-premise cloud capacity. So as we are um, are looking at the you know, clients adopting cloud and the multiple user roles that we're dealing with. Obviously, you know, the platform manager who's dealing with the physicality of the infrastructure, you know, we're all familiar with that. The virtualization manager who's been dealing uh, you know, with the hypervisors and configuration of VMs and the end users calling their infrastructure managers, you know, I, I need some compute resource, I need I need to deploy my workloads and you know dev test kinds of things, and um, contention between you know the the rapidity and the speed at which they can get the access to those resources, and so emerging out of this is is a role that we call the cloud manager here, and I'm going to name her Claudia. Um, Claudia is working certainly working closely with her infrastructure managers, the virtualization manager, but Claudia's uh, role in the in the uh, in the data center is she's been given a set of capacity, a cloud set of capacity running on an infrastructure that for the most part is, you know, is, is abstracted to her. She doesn't really care what that infrastructure looks like in detail, although she does want to see, um, have insights into what's available to her, but she's managing consumption of that, of those resources. And so what we want to, and she's managing um, consumption through allowing users to um, come into to access that, that cloud resource and create uh, deploy workloads into into that cloud, and so she wants to govern how those resources get utilized. So, and so what Cloud Manager with OpenStack does is provide a simple mechanism for Claudia to do this on behalf of her users, as well as a simple mechanism for the users to then come into the cloud um, through a self-service portal and independently deploy their workloads um, without, with, with some governance that Claudia has set up. So what Cloud Manager provides is a, is a buffet of choices on infrastructure. So the virtualization manager um, and deploying Cloud Manager with OpenStack at, can integrate with an existing infrastructure if need be, whether you know, that's a, uh, a plethora or buffet of hypervisors supported across power systems, x86 systems, including IBM Z systems. And um, so she can also provide support for a variety of images within the cloud, AIX images, Linux images primarily, um, as well as on our power systems, IBM I. And so she um, uh, is able to configure the use of those resources for her users and set some governance policies on, on, her, on the cloud that she's managing. And that's in terms of uh, how long a VM can live in the cloud. So she can set expiration policies to avoid VM sprawl or just uh, orphaned VMs um, consuming capacity. So she can set uh, expiration policies, defaults on how the cloud will operate, um, configure images for the cloud, obviously projects, which you know, you're all familiar with, with OpenStack, um, those of you that are using OpenStack and configuration of projects. And she can do this all from a single, um, UI, whether that cloud infrastructure is running on-premise or she's got other regions that may be 
uh, on another, uh, another site or even off-premise in, in software. Um, she can also get some basic um, utilization records reporting for metering and how the how the, the resources are being consumed so she can charge or um, integrate with the meter, a billing system to then uh, appropriately charge consumption of the resources. And, um, and she can also configure how those, you know, how she wants to manage optimization of the resources through, dy through uh, dynamic resource management and the platform resource scheduler. And I'll show you some of that too here as we go. So, she has a very simple UI to start. So this is Claudia's homepage to start. Um, this also becomes the self-service user portal, the self-service portal for her users once Claudia has configured and set up the cloud. So she can configure her cloud and that's where she's defining, again, the defaults for flavors to be uh, default flavors for images, uh, determining whether or not her users can override that um, preset flavor. She's defining projects. She's defining expiration and approval policies. Again, expirations. Um, if she's supporting the DevOps department, for example, and uh, say they're doing two-week sprints of development, and so she wants to set up um, maybe an expiration policy that VMs only live for you know 10 or, um, 15 days, two weeks plus a day, and so. At the end of that two-week cycle, those VMs will automatically be cleaned up, deleted from the cloud. So she doesn't have to do that manual maintenance. It happens automatically um, based on her governance policy. So she can set policies at the cloud level, and then she can also enable that for particular users, projects, that they can override those policies if need be. So she can set um, cloud-level policies as well as, as uh, project-level policies. She's also configuring her defaults for networks um, it, as she configures the uh, in that configure the cloud. Managing images, these obviously are the images that are going to be available to the users to deploy into the cloud. Um, managing requests, there is an approval capability. So if Claudia, particular workloads that are images that she wants to be aware of when there's a user request to put to deploy that, that particular image in a project, she can put an approval tag on that so she gets alerted and she has a, um, can approve or, or, um, or disallow deployment of that particular image into the cloud for whatever reason. Um, obviously managing cloud access, that's users' accounts, um, her roles, projects, and the projects that the users are associated with, and setting up the self-service portal, and then just managing what's in the cloud itself. So the VMs in the cloud, the number of instances she can look at um, instances by cloud region. So she's managing across multiple regions, multiple OpenStack regions from the, same, um, from the same portal, from the same UI. She can filter on a region or filter on a particular project or various filter options to see um, what's happening in her cloud and view uh, utilization of the, of the available resources in her cloud. So just another look at what some of the UI looks like. So looking at all of her clouds, in this case, this is all the clouds and the, work, and the instances running in the cloud. Um, again, she can see what project it's associated with, what cloud it's associated with. Um, so again, she's got multiple clouds, cloud regions in different areas of her data center or different sites or on-premise, off-premise. She can see what cloud it's associated with. Um, the project again and who the owner and what that uh, and then drill down you know filter on each one of those specific workloads and see additional um, dashboard related statistics on that cloud. On the right side she gets at a glance things that are happening in the infrastructure so the number of clouds she's managing um, any recent events things notifications that she might want to take action on or pay attention to. So the platform resource scheduler is something that uh, we have, we IBM have extended the Nova scheduler with. It's, uh, it's, it's something that uh, is available with IBM Cloud Manager and Cloud Orchestrator. Um, it's also something that is integrated into some of our other management products like PowerVC that are also built on OpenStack, have, 
and, and it's, it provides the ability to give additional scheduling options for how um, to optimize use of the cloud. So in terms of um, overcommitment or um, affinity options, and, and both um, policies for initial deployment into the cloud, so it affects initial placement and how that VM gets created in the cloud. And then as throughout the life cycle of that VM too, the ongoing um, runtime optimization and how that VM should be handled in the event of, of, a, of a host evacuation. For example, say Claudia initiates a host evacuation because she's gonna do some upgrade on the system or replace it for whatever reason and she wants to move all the VMs off of that host. Um, the runtime policies associated with those virtual machines then uh, will be uh, govern where else in the cloud those workloads may be placed. So if it were a VM that has an anti-affinity policy with, um, that it can't be co-located with another, for example, then at the runtime run policies that will take effect as it moves the workloads around the cloud. Uh, it is, like I said, uh, it, it is um, fully compatible with Nova. It is a scheduler. IBM provided scheduler. Um, separate offering that can be added to um, Cloud Manager with OpenStack or Smart Cloud Orchestrator, not required, optional, optionally usable. So some of the policies, um, again, there's initial placement policies and runtime optimization. Um, just checking time here, we're going pretty quick. Um, Packing, striping, many of our products are, uh, have that built in by default. The, the platform resource scheduler, in addition to, to extending Nova, also provide, there is also Horizon extensions to allow Claudia, our admin, to configure wh what um, policies she wants to, um, to operate upon in, in her cloud infrastructure. Um, and we'll show you that in the demo, right? That's in the demo, Nina. Uh, so, so using Horizon, she can configure those policies and they automatically take effect and as, her, uh, as, as the work, VMs are being deployed into the cloud and um, that those VMs will automatically then be managed by the infrastructure as per those, the policies that Claudia has set. Infrastructure options. So, uh, again, Claudia, for the most part, doesn't care other than what, what images, what um, can she provide and make available via projects to her users. Um, certainly the virtualization manager in the data center, you know, has, may have a preference or may have, uh, you know, providing the infrastructure that we're going to build the cloud upon. With cloud manager, and again, this is the foundation for all of our cloud offerings, so these capabilities, this uh, buffet of choices, if you will, is available to all of our cloud products and offerings. Um, is it, is, uh, as you can see, we started uh, since the Grizzly release and having a multi-hypervisor support capability. So uh, we've continued to build that out with Havana. We introduced PowerVC and we have um, a driver for the power. So PowerVC is the virtualization manager for our power systems to manage PowerVM, much like vCenter managing ESXi. Um, the PowerVC driver, we are in process of contributing that to the community. Right now it's in StackForge, and so we're incubating it in StackForge. It is available with the products. It's available for um, those that may want to kick the tires, roll their own. You can get it from StackForge. Um, so we introduced that in the Havana release, as well as a driver for our ZVM systems to provision Linux VMs on ZVM. Uh, that driver, uh, we are also working on upstreaming. That's uh, a relatively new driver, so it's available with Cloud Manager with OpenStack today. Um, IceHouse, we've added in the KVM column here, um, support for our new power systems and KVM on the power system. So on the left-hand side here, you see Power KVM. Uh, we, uh, we, Cloud Manager with OpenStack will support, uh, and through contributions made to the community, uh, KVM on the power platform just as if it were KVM on an x86 platform. So again, uh, from with one single offering, we can um, build the cloud across KVM on different um, hardware architectures, as well as mix and match with 
x86 uh, hypervisors, you know, depending on, on what the client needs are. Um, cloud manager with OpenStack. Uh, there's not a unique, uh, it says for power systems here. Again, that's, all, that's in the base cloud manager with OpenStack offering. So you get power KVM, power VM, ZVM, and the x86 hypervisors, uh, as I showed on the previous chart. New to this, to the Power uh, announcement as well with Power KVM and Power 8 is Ubuntu, the availability of Ubuntu on our, on our Linux platform. Uh, so for the Power systems, we have uh, Linux support for Red Hat, SUSE, and now Ubuntu. Uh, we talked a little bit about hybrid cloud and um, dynamic cloud. Dynamic cloud being infrastructure on your on-premise, um, you know, private cloud IT infrastructure on your on-premise, and services in a public cloud or a hosted managed private um, service on software, for example, Again, uh, which we'll, we've got a session coming up on the options there. Cloud Manager with OpenStack plays a role uh, in providing that infrastructure across the, the uh, on-premise private and off-premise private um, kinds of scenarios, and again, allowing Claudia, our, our cloud manager, to um, leverage additional ca ca capacity in soft layer, putting OpenStack um, on soft layer hardware, and from the same user interface, she doesn't have to learn new tools, she doesn't have to learn new concepts from that same interface, that OpenStack region, if you will, will be you know, brought under the cloud management um, umbrella and she will see that as, a set, as another cloud that she's managing and has capacity and, and can govern in the same way that she's managing her on-premise cloud. We have clients ZTech, China Mobile, Music Mastermind who are um, using Smart Cloud or Cloud Manager with OpenStack um, to, to provision, to, not, to, to host a cloud and then uh, the self-service capability for their clients to you know, provide that that off-premise cloud access. And so uh, we do have you know, uh, some ra rather happy clients here that are, have reduced provisioning and, and access to, the, to their users from days, sometimes weeks, to a matter of hours. So Nina, if you'd like to come up. Um, we'll show you a demo here. Hopefully, Let me just open it again. Something happened there. There we go. Okay. Let me turn off. All right. Thanks, Tammy. All right, so as Tammy said, the Cloud Manager with OpenStack is our self-service portal targeted to both um, the cloud administrator as well as the end user, um, built uh, over OpenStack. Tammy already referenced um, the welcome page, which is our landing page, and this is customized um, based on the user roles. So what you're seeing is everything that you know, Claudia, the cloud administrator, would see, the end user would see a subset of this. A lot of the actions would be familiar to most OpenStack users, you know, coming in and configuring your cloud. In this case, it's really adding um, your different cloud regions in there. You, know, you automatically would then get to work with your flavors, your network configurations, et cetera. Um, in this demo, we've got two regions defined. So she's working with two clouds. If you look over at the right-hand side, it gives you an overall cloud status. So, you know, both regions are working. Um, each region can have multiple um, hosts or nodes um, your compute nodes associated with it. So when you come into your capacity view, um, since this is your cloud manager across all your own, re uh, across all your regions, single pane of glass, you can actually work with all, you know, your hosts across all your regions. And in this case, it shows you the um, different hosts we have attached. Um, we've got some power as well as x86 nodes. Um, in region one, all our x86 nodes actually are KVM. In region two, we had Hyper-V along with power. Um, I'm just filtering on region one since that's what we're focusing on for the demo, just being a standard OpenStack demo, we've gone with um, KVM. 
Um, this demo is actually set up in a DevOps environment, so we've got the standard DevOps kind of projects defined, you know, development, test, um, pre-production for ESP, and so on. Um, Tammy had referenced the development projects. So for our development projects, um, we follow the Agile methodology. We have two-week sprints. So as you can see, um, we've customized this for 14 days for expirations. We've given a three-day um, extension period of, you know, development sometimes has last minute bugs they need to get fixed. Um, but at the end of the grace period, we delete the VMs. And, and this is something the admin could decide, right? You could just stop the VMs. But in this case, you know, for us at the end of every sprint, we start afresh. So we delete the VMs, you know, development comes back and, and requests fresh VMs. So the point of requesting fresh VMs, you, you know, just work on the project that, you know, you're actually working on, select that. For this demo, I've picked a test project, and because it's a demo, I picked the smallest image possible, so it goes through quick, so I picked Xeros. And, and this is a really simple deployment interface, as you can see, because it's something the end users also would typically work with. Um, all you really need to do is come in and put in the name of your um, instance. If you notice, the expiration date has been pre-computed for you, already set. This test, this tester needs five instances because you know going to run stress, longevity, etc. Instead of submitting five requests, you just go ahead and save five and hit deploy, and boom, the request has been sent. In this in this panel, I just wanted to show you again single pane of glass. You could actually look at all your um, deployments, or you could filter. You could filter by a cloud. You could filter by by a user or whatever. In this case, we're just looking at by, uh, specific regions. So you're looking at region one. You can see we have five development instances already deployed. The remaining five have started. You can see the first one through. So while that's deploying, what um, I'd like to do is switch over to um, the Horizon dashboard, right? And I'm going to show you the integration with PRS, our, our uh, resource scheduler. You can see we've augmented the dashboard. You've got a new um, grouping for the resource scheduler. When you click on that, it takes you to where you can um, set and edit the placement policies you want for that specific. You could do it at a cloud level. You could do it at um, a host aggregate level. Um, for this demo, we, we picked the striping policy, which is really an evenly, um, you know, evenly distribute your um, instances across your various nodes. If you remember, we had three KVM nodes. Um, Tammy had touched on the others. So I won't go into that. But that was your initial placement policy. We also have a runtime policy. Because you know you might, at the point of um, initially doing your placements, you can evenly distribute it, but then some workloads might get deleted, right? And if you still want the strapping policy to stay in effect, you, know, you have a runtime policy. Um, PRS would actually monitor the activities on your various nodes and initiate live migration under the covers. So we had a strapping policy. If you remember, we had five initial development um, instances deployed. We went ahead and deployed additional five. You can see they've been evenly distributed. You've got a three, three, and four distribution across um, all four nodes. You come back into your Cloud Manager UI, and you can see you've got your 10 instances deployed. So this is really a quick demo, just to you know, give you an, an idea as to what Tammy had talked about where you know, Claudia could come in and easily configure her cloud, single pane of glass, she could, um, I'm just going to escape out of this, and hand it back to Tammy, but um, in a single pane of glass where she could you know, work across all her regions, you know, set policies either at the cloud level or the project level, we took a quick look at the exploration policies, and, and the reason we, we allow the customization across different projects is you really do need different policies at different projects, right? Um, your production project, you definitely do not want expirations, right? But you might want an approval um, policy in effect over there. And, and then we looked at how it integrated with PRS. And we just want to show how we've extended um, the OpenStack dashboard to allow Claudia to work with the scheduler. <coughs> with that, I'll hand you back to Tammy. Thank you, Nina. So if you're interested in learning more about Cloud Manager with OpenStack or want to get some hands-on with it, uh, if you go to um, Developer Works Service Manage Connect, SMC on Developer Works, uh, within the Cloud and Virtualization Management um, category, uh, there is Cloud Manager with OpenStack. 
and it'll bring you to this portal and on the downloads page there there's actually um, options for you to um, engage with us in a hosted trial so we are hosting um, Cloud Manager with OpenStack for you. you. You don't have to download, find resources, systems on your own to install and deploy it with. You can actually just sign up for um, use of the hosted trial um, and play around with it. I think the hosted trial gives you like five days of access, free access, and, and you can explore the product on your own. Um, there's lots of other information in SMC um, about CMO and capabilities. And are, are, is anybody in here familiar with Service Manage Connect? So what this portal is, is it's, uh, it's, it's our um, interface with, with practitioners, technical practitioners, who, who want to explore our product and have contact with the developers who are actually building the product. And we look forward to working with, um, to engaging with users of the hosted trial and, uh, and the product and getting feedback and, and um, uh, on, on, on how they use the product and benefits and uh, also things they, that they would like to see us address in the product um, going forward. There's also more information on, you know, with cloud computing, other IBM sites. So that's what we have today. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, good question. The question was, so SCO is the next question. How does Cloud Manager with OpenStack relate to SCO? So Cloud Manager with OpenStack is your core, your, your foundation, basic, simple cloud deployment and management. And um, clients who start there can upgrade to SCO. And SCO then brings business process management, workload pattern deployment, you know, the advanced capabilities, which Andrew will take you through. So one builds upon the other. Other questions? Yeah. So this is mainly about integrating this Nova uh, component of the open stack. So what if what about the Hellpool Real 7 network services? Yeah, good question. So the question was, is this mainly about integrating with Nova? What about storage and network? Um, I uh, good question. This is all about all uh, building management on top of Nova Cinder, Swift, um, Neutron. So Neutron and Cinder are leveraged. We've got um, a, a variety of storage solutions that, that we support through Cinder, obviously IBM storage solutions as well as um, vendor, vendor offerings. Um, with, through Neutron we support um, Open vSwitch, our, software defined, other so, our IBM software defined networking solution. So it's a, it's a complete integrated solution across server storage and network planes. Yeah? Is there a way So I didn't catch the last part of your question. Maybe come up to the mic. I just realized there's a mic there. <laughs> yeah, the question is, is, is there a way using Cloud Manager of establishing service level agreements in terms of time up, uh, input output, storage, et cetera? In terms of, did you? Uh, time up, an example, uh, 99 on street uh, or Input output, amount of input output. So the question is: Is there any way of um, managing SLAs through Cloud Manager? Was that the question? Um, so the answer is not directly. Um, we, we do capture the events and we make the events available to you. But in terms of providing that additional level of, you know, reacting to those events, you know, allowing you to define the SLAs. Um, for, for the different um, parts of the solution that you would be interested in, but that, that is not a feature we have within this product. Any other questions? Yeah. What are the distro dependencies? Are you supporting the community open stack? Or? Okay, the, the question is, are we supporting the community open stack? What are the distros that we're supporting? So. Um, cloud Manager with OpenStack, within IBM we do um, 
build this offering from the community. So we um, are bringing in all the community code and we are building that for Red Hat distribution, Linux distribution today. And, um, and then, so that's where our, our control services or our OpenStack services are running on Red Hat. And then as you saw, we can um, manage guests on um, you know, the multiple hypervisors, Linux, Windows, AIX, IBM I, um, operating systems in, in those guests. And, and we, um, the other thing, the way that we are leveraging OpenStack is, you know, we are very diligent about it being the community edition of OpenStack, being, you know, the community OpenStack. And where we extend it or add capabilities to it, we're doing that, you know, as per, gov you know, governed by how the community expects OpenStack to be extended. And we also, you know, always look to contribute back to the community. So like the platform resource scheduler as a, uh, uh, replacing the no or extending the Nova scheduler, so um, you know w we aren't we are diligent about not creating a blue washed open stack. This is the community open stack. Any other questions? Okay, next up is uh, Andrew Trossman will be talking about Smart Cloud Orchestrator and kittens and cows. Um, so <laughs> if you want to know about kittens and cows. Uh, come back in about, or stay, uh, be back in 10 minutes and how kittens and cows apply to the Smart Cloud Orchestrator. Oh, 30 minutes. Um, and then at 11.50, uh, Michael Fork will be talking about OpenStack and SoftLayer. So thank you for coming. Appreciate your time. <laughs>